few seconds and they are in. Welcome. And so take a Bible, turn to Genesis chapter 3, and we are going to be talking a little bit about answering a question that is pretty uh, often asked. What's wrong with this picture? What's wrong with this picture? And, uh, or, or just what's wrong? Now, it, it all depends on your perspective as far as what you would answer in that question. We could get a marker and write on the board here, but we could just fill the board with all kinds of things that are wrong. Some we've mentioned already that, that we have a hard time. It, but, but people on the other side of that would see us as being wrong, right? And, but one thing is for sure, what, whatever it is, some, we, we look at, sometimes we look at what's wrong with this world by looking at people we got. Well, there's good people and then there's the bad people. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Us and them thing. Well, as, as believers, by the way, we can go ahead and throw cold water on that and say, the scripture tells us that our enemy is not people. No. Our enemy is the spiritual forces of darkness and wickedness. Not people, not flesh and blood. The scripture is very clear about that. However, the, the, the enemy's out there, right? And there's, so sometimes we do that. Sometimes we look at the world and we say, well, you know what's wrong with the world? There's poverty, you know, there's starvation, there's inequality. There's, there's those kind of things. There's, there's a breakdown of the family. We, we can identify many things that we say, what's wrong with this picture? Depending on your values, depending on your point of view of the world, your answer to that question might be different. Your list might look different. As we sit here in a church, in a Bible study, uh, all of us here, I'm assuming all of us are believers and have a relationship with Jesus Christ, we have a certain world view. And other places where they're talking about things that are going on in this world, they don't have that same world view. They have a different one. But one thing is for sure. Everybody would agree, I'm pretty sure every person on the planet would agree something's wrong. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. I mean, either they think you're wrong or they're wrong. You know, everybody would agree that this world's not spinning the way it should. Right? What's wrong with this picture? <clears throat> and and so, so they would all they would all agree with that. Well, here's the key thing: the Bible, and we we of course look at look to God's word for for the answers and for what uh, can help us define and have that biblical worldview and to identify what's wrong with this picture. The Bible calls it very simply, the truth is, it calls it sin. Mm. Okay? We don't always hear about that. No. Uh, you know, it's not a really fun topic to preach on, but yet, unless we realize that that's what is wrong with this picture, that's the, that's the crack in the egg called the earth. That is the, that, the in, in, in humankind, the problem is sin. And uh, we're, we're talking about it tonight because everybody, every one of us, has that problem. The Bible tells us that. All oh, have sinned yeah. and fall short of the glory of God. Well, Boom. You're all in the basket. Mm -hmm. you, you know, there's no, nobody uh, save Jesus himself that ever was without sin. Mm -hmm. So we all have sin. Everyone has it. Sin is what we're going to find out tonight. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 3 where this terrible crack in the creation, this, this uh, uh, detour from God's design of the way this world should be, where it first came into being. And it's still here. Right? Right. And I think, Pastor Mike, you're right. You know, in our previous studies, we've seen how whatever God made was good and perfect. And so, like you said, this crack, something ruptured. Right. And this is why you refer to a sin. And it's really ruptured it bad. Uh, we are in this situation. Uh, it's terrible. So, we got a mess. How do we clean up this mess? Okay. Now, that's what, of course, that's what the scripture is all about. Right. In fact, the more we try to clean up the mess, <laughs> the worse the mess gets. <clears throat> you ever done that before? Mm -hmm. I, I remember the first time I, I was trying to change my own oil and I spilled the oil on the floor of the garage and uh, 
you know, if, if maybe you've never had that uh, happen to you, but then you try to clean up the oil and you start spreading it around, it just spreads around. It doesn't soak up in anything. How do you clean this stuff up? And it becomes a bigger mess. Well, that's the way it is when we, as human beings, as the creation, try to correct something that has a divine uh, uh, aspect to it. And so, what, what we need, we need somebody to clean this mess up. And that's what the scripture tells us. But first, we got to understand what the mess is. And basically, sin, <clears throat> there's, there's volumes written on what sin is and theology of sin and all that, but when it comes down to it, sin is a defiance against God. It's defiance against God. It is, even more simply, straying from God's design. Whenever you get out of the boundaries, whenever you get out of the design that you were specifically designed, because God created all of us. Remember, we've talked about that. God created all of us. Whenever you get away from that, there's always consequences. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But, but what you know? What let's look at where this introduction of this horrible thing called sin came into the world and it's called the fall okay and here it is fall time <laughs> but not the same fall this is the fall of humankind as we fell from paradise so uh, what I want us to do is you're there in Genesis chapter 3 <clears throat> and uh, we've talked about creation we've done that for a couple of weeks in chapter 1 and chapter 2 now we're in chapter 3 Another very familiar story, but so crucial for us to understand what's wrong with this world. So who would read that for me? Just read uh, seven verses. Let's just do seven verses. Uh, would anybody? Which one? Seven, one through seven. Okay, King James. Sure. <laughs> now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the women, Yes, as God said, you shall not eat of the tree, of, eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the servant, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat, and the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. Hmm. And they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. Wow, okay, familiar story. I want us to point out a few little details that I think are, are help help to enlighten the story. And first of all, let's go back up. We backed up to what we talked about last week when we were finishing our study last week, and that is when it comes to the creation. Okay, the the first thing is that I'd like to ask is why did God put a tree in the garden that they can't eat from? Why why did He do that? We we talked about this a little bit last week. What's your answer? Free will so test. Freedom. <laughs> freedom. Yeah. Love it. Freedom. It's it's the freedom to choose. Now, why would he want to give us the freedom to choose? So we're, not, so we're different than the animals. Okay, well, we're, yeah, we're not robots. Okay. But there there's a characteristic of God that, that God, 1 John t says, God is love. And love has choice. If you don't have a choice, there can't be love. Not not that experience. Because if I can't. If I make you love me, it's not really loving me, no. right? You can't make somebody love you. Okay, they have to choose to do it. And when they choose to do it, then there's love. It's a relationship, and that's what's so unique. And as Sam, as you just said, it it separates us from. That, to have that that intimate relationship with God, a love relationship with God, that that the other parts of creation, although they although they love God, although they they uh, <clears throat> they they are created by God, they don't have that relationship like like humankind does. And so, uh, 
we, we point that out so that God did do that. He give, It's love. He gives us a choice. And I want you to notice where he put it. Where did he put the tree? In the middle. Of the right in the middle. Now, why didn't he put it off to the side? Why didn't he put it off to the side? So when he, you know, all the trees in the garden, you know, because they had permission to eat all the trees, right? So, so there's all these bazillions of trees, or however many there were, and you know, God puts the one they can't eat. Not only does he put one that they can't eat from, but he puts it in the middle. In the middle. Why do you think he did that? What a pain! That's exactly right. It, if he puts it in the middle, they're going to keep going past it all the time. They're going to constantly be reminded. I wish he would have just put it over to the side and we all just forget about it and we could be eating and everything and then occasionally some radical crazy person would get over off to the side and say, hey, what's this tree? Right? And then maybe they would have a problem and, you know, lose, lose, <laughs> you know, their, but, but no, he puts it in the middle with everybody. By the way, I've got to, you, you notice the camera's bowing. All right, that's right. So, I'm trying to, our right. Facebook people are chiming in saying, where are you going? <laughs> Uh, we're in that. <coughs> uh, <laughs> I never saw a camera. Seen a camera do a curtsy before. Yeah, now the camera. Uh, okay, sorry about that, Facebook folks. So, uh, so God not only put a tree in the garden that we can't eat from because not because He was trying to trip us up, and it was not because He is trying to tempt us. Okay but for choice, for love. Actually, the opposite of that, not being mean to us, but showing his love to us. Puts it in the middle of the garden so that it is a regular practice to consistently, on a daily basis, make a choice to follow the Lord. It's not just a one-time thing that, oh, and you put it out of your mind. There's always going to be, let me put it to you this way, and that is, what one of the things Genesis chapter 3 tells us or, or chapter 2, the creation story, and chapter 3, is there's always going to be a tree in your garden. There's always going to be one. It's never going to be that you got, there's, it, that everything goes for you. Just a, another way to look at it is it's very identifiable. It's right there. For somebody like me, don't forget, did you say that one or that one? No, it's just one right in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> you can't forget. <laughs> you know, and, and, and I want you to, uh, that t takes me to my second point. So, so the first point is th that the tree is there because God loves us, because he wants us to love him, and it's in the middle so that we don't have a choice. I mean, we have a choice right. always and consistently, but also the instructions are very clear. I want you to understand that because... When we encounter temptations today, or when we encounter doubts and things like that, when you're walking into your Christian life, there are times when you say, I wonder what's the right thing to do, right? Mm -hmm. and, and those things we pray about, or we look into the scriptures, we try mm -hmm. to figure it out, or we talk to Christian friends and brothers and sisters. But there's some things that are very clear, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there's some things in the Bible that are very clear. And you can argue about it, and you can talk about it, and you're, but it's clear. I want you to understand, these instructions were clear. You can eat it of any tree in the garden, okay? Except this one. Don't eat of this one. Dangerous. Stay away, okay? That's clear. He didn't say you could play with it, you could kind of eat it, you could lick it, but you just can't eat it. He didn't say, you know, but... All right? I just want you to know, it's clear. I, I want you to see that because in our the enemy, when we talk about the enemy, and we talk about it, it's, it's the evil forces of darkness. The, in the Bible, it talks about Satan. It talks about the devil, the Satan. Okay, in, in Satan's... What, what Satan does most of the time when... He is trying to trip us up is that he takes what God has said or he takes God's design and he attacks that see and he chips away at it but he doesn't just do it obviously no. you know I'm always amused with the movies where you know somebody's sitting there and then this big red devil comes with the horns and the pitchfork and there's flames all around him and tries to tempt somebody to do something you know really 
I kind of know who you are. <laughs> you know, this is a no-brainer, as as people would say. Oh. <laughs> See, he didn't like that. Me saying that about him. I don't have any idea what this is doing. Sorry to the Facebook people. Now. Coming to class next week. Yeah. It, it, <coughs> so. Yeah, let's go over and mix that tape on it. You don't know what? We can actually take this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Maybe. All right. Now, Daniel is fixing the camera to you Facebook people who are looking at Daniel's hand. All right. There you go. All right. We should be okay now. Yeah, we should be okay now. Uh, although I have no idea what we were talking about. But <laughs> the, the, the devil, the devil, we were talking about the devil. He takes it and he attacks it. So I, I, I want us to, because D Daniel's really got where this is, this is going, but I, I want you to see this, that look what Satan does, the serpent does with Eve and Adam, by the way. Oh, by the way, Adam was there. Yeah. I mean, if you look at it, Adam didn't just show up. Mm -hmm. He was right there. Sure. She hand, and then she handed it to him. Well, if he wasn't there, she couldn't have done that. So Why, did Adam, why didn't Adam tell her not to do it? Because he's a dummy. He's a man. He's a, uh, you know. Uh, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. This was a team fall. All right. A lot of people, you know, they read that and they go, "You see, it's you know the 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 woman." It was first and all of that. Yeah. When, uh, those women. If we yeah. just didn't, the women are the cause of all. no, no. They were both there. Yeah. And whether his sin was not stopping her, mm -hmm. or just saying yeah it looks good I think you know they could have had a discussion that's not sure. recorded here the point is both of them were there okay mm -hmm. all right and that's where we, we, we get from that so we, we as parents know uh, about not tempting our little children with a choice when they can't handle the choice God is all knowing and he knew when he created Adam and Eve what they were going to do why didn't he just give them more self-control or something like that why did he Knowing what they're going to do, why did he build it that way? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, obviously, we, 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 Pastor Mark, we learn about God making us in his image and in his likeness. And so we're talking about two adults, you're talking about children, you know, but here you are with Adam and Eve, and they knew God's express command, <coughs> and they knew it very well. And so it's not, as Pastor Mark said, it's not like God was trying to trick them or anything of that sort. And God, you know, when you were talking about the fact that it was in the center, the tree. Quite often in George, we talk about how do I even know God's will for my life? Have you heard people ask that question? What's God's will for my life? And we have a whole study on that. You know, but you're right. The tree is right there in the, you know, and God's will is there in your face. God knows, you know, because God made us with a purpose. And so we all have something about God in us. And so I think to answer your question, yeah. God was right there. This whole thing was right there in the middle there for them. And God made us to have this relationship, love, you know, you know, with us. And so it's not even a question that I think really when you think about it, you know, we should even uh, try and address because it was right there, right there in your face. I, th I think one mm -hmm. another thing that we can learn here, if you look at the, the story, there's sin doesn't usually just yeah. slap you in the face, mm -hmm. okay? There's a process yeah. that happens. Yeah. Now, look at what the serpent says to Eve very first. What does she say? What does the serpent say? He says, uh, so God says you can't eat of all the trees of the garden. Really? Yeah. Did, did he really? Did yeah. he really? Yeah. Okay. So what, what is the serpent trying to put in? Doubt. Doubt. Yeah. Doubt of what? God's Let's word. be very specific. God's word. God's word. Doubt of God's word. No. Now, fast forward. Fast forward to today. Okay? It begins with Satan saying, doubting God's word. Yeah. The word that was for sure, it was clear. No. That, that's the thing. It was clear. This is not part where, well, we're going to have a debate. What's the theology of eating from the tree in the middle of the garden? You know, no, 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 no. This one was clear. This was clear. 
You don't eat from this one. You can eat from any other one. You don't eat from this one. Did God really say that? Did God really say that? So the first thing comes up is doubt. Now, I, I know... I, this. So it's not a matter that Eve didn't know what God mm -hmm. said. She knew what God said. But then, now she... Did he say that? Huh. I wonder if he did say that. <laughs> you know? Did God really say... So he's casting doubt on God's word. So that starts... That's how it starts. Yeah. Now, casting doubt on God's word is casting... Uh, when we have doubts... That's not necessarily, that's not sin. Sin hadn't entered yet, okay? But see, Satan was doubt. It, it, sin can begin but first by having us doubt God's word. There are things that are going on right now in our world today mm -hmm. that God's word, word is very clear about. Right. Yeah, right. But, mm -hmm. but people would have you doubt that, right. you know? And, and that can even come from a pulpit. Yeah. That's true. You know? Hey, I know that God, it says this in the Bible, but is that what God really means? Whoa. Uh, listen, I've heard that before. Sure. Here's, here's what it really means. Whoa. Really? And people go, hmm. Yeah. Did God really say that was the design for the family? You understand? Okay, so... In fact, if I may just chime in your personal mind, and I think, George, your question also, God said it. And so, what should have been the response of Eve? Yes, God said it. But, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, we wouldn't say, oh, yeah, did, did he really say that? Oh, let me think. But, you see, God said it, and it, God's word was the creative word from the beginning. With his word, he made everything. In fact, even you, Eve and Adam, God's word made you, created you. God spoke, the psalmist says, and it holds fast. And yeah. so I think yeah. the response, and that's what I learned from this, Pastor Mike. Did God really say it? Yes. yes Rather than, uh, well, I'm not sure. Let me think about it. And that's how the devil comes in. So when she does say, well, he did say we could eat from every other tree. It's just this one that we're not supposed to eat from. She quotes it, but she's obviously doubting. You can exactly. tell by just the way she phrases it. And then, and then she's, then, uh, what's the next thing the serpent said? What? You'll be like God. You'll be what? You. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to shift it to, does God, God doesn't know what's best for you. Think about it. You know, I know. Okay, so he said that. Well, I wonder why he said that. Because you know what? This this fruit's pretty good. Hmm. And don't you know what's best for you? He probably didn't tell you to eat it. Yeah. Because when you eat it, you get to be God of yourself. Wow. And you don't have to do that. That's why he told you. And you, what? Whoa. How dare God do that to me? Yeah. I'll eat that fruit if I want. Right? Mm -hmm. He's not the boss of me. What's he got? <laughs> And next thing you know, she's looking at it, and then what happens? Mm -hmm. She looks at it, what? It looks good. What? It looks good to eat. It looks, it looks pretty good. good. I'm rebels, yeah. she, it looks pretty good. So I want you to see. Now, where did she go? First, there's a little bit of a doubt on God's word. Then, God, then Satan manipulates God's word to say, God's not, God doesn't love you. He's, he's selfish. He's holding you down. Yeah. He's holding you down. And, of course... Somebody's holding you down. What are you going to do? Sure it's too right. If I Fight if I push on oh, you, yes, Pastor I'll, Daniel, I'll, you're going to push yeah. back. I'll, absolutely. Okay. I'm going to. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So, all of a sudden now, I'm and now I look at it, and now there's the presentation. See, it's the <laughs> temptation. Yeah. You know, hey, this looks pretty good. Hmm. Now, she she didn't say that it looked pretty good before. She didn't keep. It doesn't say that they were walking by going, mouth watering. They just couldn't wait. You know, I can't believe he's keeping us from eating this tree. It looks so good. You know, because we always have it painted as an apple, you know. Cause it, it, but, it, you know, it, it, it just looks so... It doesn't say that that's what it was. No. It was only after they doubted God's word. Right. Only after they doubted not only his word, but God's motivation and reasons. Because he's just trying to keep you down. Mm. Now I look at it, and it looks good. Yeah. It looks good. So mm. now the sin looks good. See, that's the mistake. She starts to get into this dialogue yeah. with him. And rational, oh, rational. yeah. Let's start discussing this. Mm -hmm. Instead mm -hmm. of like Pastor Daniel said, just 
No. So then she gets into a dialogue. Then yeah. she eats it. Yeah. She eats it. That, okay, now rebellion. She broke the she broke the uh, design. Mm -hmm. She did it. The, the results. Whenever we go outside of God's design, I told you we find the consequences. There's, uh, but 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 you have to see that this wasn't just Eve's such a dummy, no. or Adam's just a dummy, mm -hmm. or whatever. What is what are they thinking? Mm -hmm. Listen, every single one of us mm -hmm. in that position yeah. would be tempted in the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, but. The doubt part of it, the temptation part of it, the even the, where they're throwing doubt on God's integrity about it. As you're thinking about these things, that's mm. not the sin yet. Right. The sin is what you do with that. Mm. Even Jesus was tempted, yeah. but he was without sin. Yeah. Temptation's not sin. Mm. We can we there's temptations all around. There's always going to be a tree in your garden. Every time you walk past it, it's right in the middle, and you're going to be tempted. But that's not a sin. In fact, creation was good. Yeah. He made that tree. It was yeah. good. Yeah. All right? So it's all good. Mm -hmm. It's what you do with the temptation. It's like the saying goes, you, you can't stop the birds from flying over your head, but you can keep them from making a nest in your hair. Mm -hmm. It's easier for some of us. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you know, Pastor Mike, this is interesting because, you know, we, I think it's been said, we can rationalize, we can say all kinds of things about, but you said it, sin is not something that just happens. There's always a process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when we get sucked into it and we begin to entertain it and all of that, then that's where the, pro and I think you can see this process played out so powerfully in this, you know, situation here. Mm -hmm. God said, don't eat it. And before the devil came in the form of the serpent to them, they'd been walking past this tree all the time and there was no problem until that whole thing gradually, be, that conversation started and then they got sucked into it. You know, and so Pastor Mark, as you were talking, there was a, a verse which came to my mind. Just let me read this, just to affirm all the point that you've made. In First Peter chapter uh, 3 and verse uh, 15, but in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. What is it that makes you a Christian? Adam and Eve, God made you with a purpose. And he gave you the word, all those, you know, kind of to be in relationship with you. And so when the devil came, and I'm just saying this kind of in a blunt way, but it's something very serious all that they should have said was god said it and it's good enough for me mm -hmm. but then they began to get into it and that's where the problem is yep they started all right who said that uh, sam did you say that or somebody said it started the dialogue yeah yeah dave you're in it's funny you know last last year <coughs> in august it began we at the men's bible study on thursday nights we had a seminar that uh uh, Dr. Lewis on the manhood series yeah. and it was so funny in this part that you know Adam was absent and he was just it's like the process we're talking about is well he kind of bypassed Adam because Adam was put in charge of the garden he was made first it was his responsibility and it's funny how it's not funny but he's clever Satan's clever he just chose to dialogue to speak with her yeah. and he and Dr. Lewis point well, what was he doing yeah. he's just standing there and mm -hmm. you know because he was present yeah. and he just let it go on you know where instead of like stepping in yeah. and, and taking charge but it, it unfolded the way it did so it was an interesting point sure. mm -hmm. yeah well the and the whole point I wanted to make before uh, mm -hmm. Pastor Daniel talks about the consequences is that that sin mm -hmm. is it's sly it's yeah. it's clever mm -hmm. it's crafty and mm -hmm. it begins just the same way it began with Eve, Adam and Eve, and that is the doubting of God's word. Mm. When people talk about, you know, and, and people wonder why, why does, why do you just always preach out of the Bible and you always look at the Bible? Well, because it's God's word. Yeah. Do I understand everything in the Bible? No, no. But it's the things that you do understand. Mm. You know, don't eat 
of that tree that was clear and there are so many things it was mark twain who said you know it's not the part of the bible that i don't understand that bothers me it's the parts of the bible that i do understand you know that's and uh, it's you know you you have god is very clear about more things than you could possibly think about and yet many times we get wrapped up around things that we maybe we don't know about but God is very clear about some things he's, he's sovereign and he, you can't you know stop him from making or doing what he wants to do and he made Adam and of course he knew but at the same time I think there's somewhere in the Bible where Jesus referred to the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world he also had the solution at the same time right. even though it broke his heart you know but yeah, but he he had the plan. Yeah, he had the plan, and uh, so consequences, Pastor yes, Daniel. Yeah, Pastor tell us. My, yeah, I think this is a, a great study because you know, as human beings, we all try to make excuses, and because that's that's how we are. We don't want, and I think we we see in this even after the whole thing kind of ruptured. Oh, is the woman that you gave me? Well, <laughs> right. it's a serpent. <laughs> and, and, you know, so we try this blame game. You see, this is how this is how sin really kind of takes us by captive and and so we can spend all the time talking about this whole process and you know just for to, you know tonight we can only talk a little bit about the consequences of that and we know that the end result of this whole process was ultimately death mm-hmm. eternal separation from god <laughs> and from one another and so pastor mike you've talked about this whole thing about unbelief and uh, you know how this led to eve kind of looking at its history longing, you know, with some kind of desire. You know, in other words, it became an idolatry for her. Mm-hmm. You know, in other words, this is good. Mm-hmm. And then because she coveted it, it led to this rebellion. And this rebellion led to, you know, this whole separation from God. But thanks be to God. We serve a God who, even though we always sin against him and we disobey him, he doesn't abandon us. And that's what makes Christianity different from all the other religions. Mm -hmm. Because in all the other religions, when you step on that God, what does he do? Revenge. Boom. He kills you. But we serve a God in Christianity. Our God doesn't do that. And so when we were destined to die because of this separation, because of this disobedience, God came. Even as God pronounced that curse, there was some some glimmer of hope Mm -hmm. and that's the beauty and so let's go to um genesis chapter 2 chapter 3 and uh, let's look at uh let me read from uh, verse 15 let me read a couple of verses there verse 15 and then uh, um i will go down to uh uh, chapter 4 1 you know so verse 15 of chapter 3 and i will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers he will crush your head and you will strike his heel you know again you can see there is something there there is some promise even in this verse if you look at it carefully god is not going to allow this separation to continue forever there's going to be something that is coming to really disturb this whole thing and for god to bring us back to where he wanted us to be originally and so there is all this kind of thing that is actually going on and so even in the curse of the woman we see all of this if, i mean look at verse 16 to the woman she said he said i will make your pains in childbearing very severe with painful labor you will give birth to children your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you again look at that and some people read it and say well that's why you, you're a woman you got to obey me but look there's something for adam also over there because in this situation both of them are really in dire straits because there's this going to be this pain you know, ladies and gentlemen, sin leads to pain. Mm. And this pain is felt by both Adam and Eve. And it is very clear in this verse. And so, prior to the fall, there is no mention of pain. After the fall, pain, you know, our lives became marked by pain and suffering of every kind. Women, men, children, boys and girls, animals, everything about creation you know kind of began to suffer and so there's this consequence of sin physical separation and also 
this kind of emotional and relational separation that actually you know happens and so i just want to say that one clear result of sin is that sin leads to a relational conflict <clears throat> and that's what we see in our homes in our families in our churches in, you know everywhere there is this kind of relationship conflict and that actually happened when adam and eve strayed mm -hmm. from this <clears throat> if they had said god said it that is it would have been you know okay but because we got sucked into that and so all of this also leads to fertility you know you know uh thorns and thistles and all of that uh and then obviously the loss of presence uh, you know of god's presence you know with us in fact moses said it when moses said to god if you're not going with us then don't even take us to the promised land because when we are bereft of god's presence we might as well be dead mm -hmm. Because this whole thing we're studying is actually separation from God. The sin in the Garden of Eden was this separation from God. Yeah. And that's the you know, result of what we're you know, looking at. And so what actually happened in chapter 4, let me just read through uh, chapter 4, 1 to 8 quickly. Um, and look at again the other consequence of this whole separation of, and sin that came. In chapter 4, verse 1 to verse 8, Adam made love to his wife, uh, Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, kind of really, as they gave um, Cain this uh, you know, name, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. So that's the meaning of Cain. Later, she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel, and his offering but on Cain and his offering he did not look with favor so Cain was very angry another result of sin anger and when we get angry it leads downhill from there and this is exactly what took place when he became angry we know the end result his face was downcast then the Lord said to Cain why are you angry why is your face downcast if you do what is right will you not be accepted there's a whole kind of, um, you know, uh, depth to even these verses that we're reading. And again, just because of time constraints, we can't get into it. But something is going on. It's not about the offering necessarily, but you can see there's this relationship that's going on again. Cain and Abel, and, you know, using the offering because there's something that is remiss in all of this. And so, but if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. And I wish he had. But you could not. Because once sin takes hold of us, it leads us downhill. It drives us and it's so fast. So this is what happened. Now Cain said to his brother, verse 8, Abel, let us go out to the field. While they were there in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and did what? Killed him. Oh boy, sin. The wages of sin is death. You know, this thing that we talked about, this process that we, Pastor Mike, started taking us through, you see, it took us all the way from there, and finally, death. Death in the family. Something that wasn't God's original plan. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the result of sin. Sin brings separation. It brings death. Our Christian death, our spiritual death, our physical death, everything. But you know, it's kind of interesting when you read all of this. That God did not just leave us there. And uh, we will look more about, you know, about this next week. But just let me finish this, you know. If you look at what God is saying here, I think it's kind of interesting. Just let me read another verse from, uh, you know, um, you know, Romans. Because it helps us uh, to put this, you know, right. In Romans chapter um, uh, 5. And let's look at verse 15 to verse 19. Just let me read this, you know, you know, to your hearing. Romans chapter 5, verses 15 through 19. But the gift is not like the trespass. If, for if the many died by the trespass of one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to many? Nor can the gift of God to, uh, be compared with the result of one man's sin. 
The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. For if by the trespass of one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in the life through the one man, Jesus Christ? And so what Paul is saying is that through this one man, Adam, sin came. Through the second Adam, Jesus Christ, life. And so this whole thing about sin, Pastor Mike, is a very serious thing. Yes. Sin destroys. Mm -hmm. Sin separates us from God. But thanks be to God that through Jesus Christ, the sin problem is taken care of. And so we don't have to be like Adam and Eve. We have to say on the authority of God's word, this is what God is saying and it's good enough for me. Because we've seen what led to death in the first place when Eve got sucked into all of that and finally led them downhill to this you know, destruction that we have. Mm. This is a very serious thing, yes. It's amazing though when you read this story, Cain and Abel, that a sin of this magnitude occurred so early. Yeah. It's not like a stranger, like you read in the right. paper, someone knocked off the, you know, right. this is like his younger brother, hey, come with me. Yeah. And it's like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So don't let us, you know, take sin lightly at all. <clears throat> sin destroys. But we need, you know, so there's this question here that I have. Or if you look on the uh, sheet, uh, the bottom, what are some ways people demonstrate selfish sin today? You know, this whole thing about sin is selfishness. We know that. You know, we talk about so many things about sin, but sin is selfish. And that is really what is destroying all of us. And so, what are some of the selfish things about sin that you see? And I've given some, a few things there. Sin brings about division. It brings about hatred. It brings about murder, which we just seen, you know, Cain and Abel. Envy, theft, gossip, rape, you know, looking at pornography, adultery, laziness, and you can add, you know, you know to the list. And so tonight, God's word is very clear. Let us run from sin. Mm. Let us put a distance between us and sin. And yeah. we can only do that, Pastor Mike through the grace of God. That's right. That's right. And we need to, that's why it says flee. Flee from temptation. They should have been fleeing. They should have been warning signs. Bells should have been going off at the beginning hmm. when they said, when he said, is that really what God said? Hmm. And that's when, that's when you got to stop it. Hmm. You know, once you get, once you're in that, once she saw that fruit and it looked good, hmm. she's gone. <laughs> Okay? It, that's why we got to recognize it. And where is the doubt? Where, where is our society throwing doubt on God's Word? And where's, where's it, uh, where are our churches throwing doubt on God's Word? That's where we got to stop it. That's where we got to say, no, this is what God says. Amen. So I, I think we're going to, we'll get into this more next week yep. as we uh, continue this this study. Well, thank you all for coming. Let's just uh, conclude our time uh, with prayer and then we can go and get our uh, kids and grandkids from Awana. Father, we thank you for your word.